in 1962, James Watson, Francis Kirk, and Morris Wilkin jointly received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for their 1953 determination of the structure of deoxyribonucleic acid, means DNA. Wilkin's colleague Rosalind Franklin, who died of cancer at the age of 37, was not so honored because the Nobel Prize can only be shared by three scientists. The molecule that is the basis of heredity, DNA, contains the patterns of constructing proteins in the body, including the various enzymes. A new understanding of heredity and hereditary disease was possible once it was determined that DNA consists of two chains twisted around each other or double helixes of alternating phosphate and sugar groups and that the two chains are held together by hydrogen bonds between pairs of organic bases adenine A with thymine T and guanine G with cytosine C. Modern biotechnology also has its basis in the structural knowledge of DNA. In this case, the scientists' ability to modify the DNA of host cells that will then produce a desired product, for example, insulin. The background for the work of the four scientists was formed by several scientific breakthroughs made by X-ray crystallographers in studying organic macromolecules. The growing evidence supplied by geneticists that it was DNA, not protein, in chromosomes that was responsible for heredity. Erwin Chargaff's experimental finding that there are equal numbers of A and T bases and G and C bases in DNA and Linus Pauling's discovery that the molecules of some proteins have helical shapes arrived at through the use of atomic models and a keen knowledge of possible disposition of various atoms. Of the four DNA researchers, only Rosalind Franklin had any degree in chemistry. She was born into a prominent London banking family where all the children, girls and boys were encouraged to develop their individual aptitudes. Already at work at King's College was Maurice Wilkins, a New Zealand born but Cambridge educated physicist. As a new PhD, he worked during World War II on the improvement of cathode ray tube screens for use in radar and then was shipped out of the United States to work on Manhattan Project. Like many other nuclear scientists, he became disillusioned with his subject when it was applied to the creation of the atomic bomb. He turned instead to biophysics, working with his Cambridge mentor, John T. Randall, who had undergone a similar conversion. It was Wilkins' idea to study DNA by X-ray crystallographic techniques which he had already begun to implement when Franklin was appointed by Randolph. The relationship between Wilkins and Franklin was unfortunately a poor one and probably slowed their progress. Meanwhile in 1951, 23-year-old James Watson, a Chicago-born American, arrived at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge. Watson had two degrees in zoology a bachelor's degree from the University of Chicago and a doctorate from Indiana University where he became interested in genetics. He had worked under Salvador E. Luria at Indiana on bacteriophages, the viruses that invade bacteria in order to reproduce a topic for which Luria received a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1969. Watson went to Denmark for postdoctoral work to continue studying viruses and to remedy his relative ignorance of chemistry. At a conference in the spring of 1951 at the zoological station at Naples, Watson heard Wilkins talk on the molecular structure of DNA 
and saw his recent X-ray crystallographic photographs of DNA. He was hooked. Watson soon moved to the Candavish laboratory where several important X-ray crystallographic projects were in progress. Francis Kirk, who had earned a bachelor's degree in physics from University College London and had helped develop radar and magnetic mines during World War II. Kirk, another physicist in biology, was supposed to be writing a dissertation on X-ray crystallography of hemoglobin when Watson arrived, eager to recruit a colleague for work on DNA. Inspired by Pauling's success in working with molecule models, Watson and Kirk rapidly put together several models of DNA and attempted to incorporate all the evidence they could gather. The four scientists announced the structure of DNA in articles that appeared together in the same issue of Nature. Then they moved off in different directions. Franklin went to Birkbeck College, London to work in G.D. Bernal's laboratory, a much more congenial setting for her than King's College. Before her untimely death from cancer, she made important contributions to the X-ray crystallographic analysis of the structure of the tobacco mosaic virus, a landmark in the field. By the end of her life, she had become friends with Francis Kirk and his wife and had moved her laboratory at Cambridge where she undertook dangerous work on the polyvirus. Wilkins applied X-ray techniques to the structural determination of nerve cell membranes and of ribonucleic acid RNA, a molecule that is associated with chemical synthesis in the living cell, while rising in the rank and responsibility at King's College. Watson's subsequent career eventually took him to the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory of quantitative biology on Long Island, where as director from 1968 onward, he led it to new heights as a center of research in molecular biology. From 1988 to 1922, he headed the National Center for Human Genome Research at National Institutes of Health. Afterwards, he returned to CSHL, from which he retired in 2007. During Kirk's long tenure at Cambridge, he made fundamental contributions to unlocking the genetic code. After 20 years at Cambridge, with several visiting professorships in the United States, Kirk joined the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California. Thank you for watching Edupedia World. Please subscribe to watch more videos.